Welcome to the introduction of TOGAF ADM, Phase E, Opportunity, and Solution. In the previous phases, B, C, and D, we've developed the baseline and target architectures of all architecture domains and recognized the gaps in between. In Phase E, we focus on how to deliver the architecture. The goal of Phase E is identify the delivery vehicles to effectively deliver the target architecture. Here are three key concepts to transitioning from developing to delivering a target architecture. Work packages, which are the logical group of changes. Transition architectures, which are the intermediate architectures in between the baseline and target, outlining the status of the enterprise architecture at specific times. Implementation and migration plan, which is the schedule of projects that will realize the target architecture. The majority part of Phase E is to identify and detail the work packages, transition architectures, to develop the implementation and migration plan. We will walk you through each of them in a minute. Activities of Phase E In Phase B, C, and D, you've performed gap analysis. You know what components will be added and removed. But there are still some questions you need to answer before you can go realizing the differences. First, you know there are new components, but what exactly have to be done to produce the components? Same for removal. How will the components be removed from the architecture? Will there be any migration activities that take place? Do you expect any intermediate stays between the baseline and target? And what's the time frame of changes? These questions should be answered in phase E by identifying the followings. Work packages which are groups of related changes within the project. Transition architectures, which are the possible intermediate situations between the baseline architecture and the target architecture. Implementation and migration plan, which provides a schedule for implementation of the solution described by a transition architecture. Activity 1. Develop architecture roadmap. You've identified the baseline and target architecture and determined the gap in between. Here you are going to determine and confirm what changes would be involved during the transformation from baseline to target by creating an implementation factor assessment and deduction matrix. A factor is a fact or situation that may potentially impact the implementation of architecture. A factor is typically a kind of risk. For example, a reduction of profit due to the temporary suspension of service. An issue. For example, an outdated system. Assumption. For example, it is supposed that the staff will have the required knowledge to use the new system without further trainings. Dependency. For example, backup must be done before kickoff, such as the consolidation of IT services. Impact such as the dismissal of employees. You can identify the factors based on the problem statement, the business cases created, and the gap identified. New factor deduced by assessing a given factor. The new factor usually leads to a decision of extra work, a reminder of problem awareness, or further plan for communication. By accessing the factors deduced, new factors can be found constituting the actions or changes needed to be taken to implement the target architecture. Here is another matrix known as the Consolidated Gaps, Solutions, and Dependencies matrix. You might have created a set of diagrams for baseline, target, and gaps. This matrix is to help you consolidate your work by listing out the consolidated gaps based on the different architecture domains the potential solutions to be applied to realize the changes identified as gap. For example, the gap may indicate that a new CRM system will be added in the target architecture, so the solution could be to use a commercial off-the-shelf CRM solution as a replacement of the existing scattered CRM systems, and the dependencies between domains by considering the relationships of elements in the different architectural domains. Business transformation is the process to reach the desired target architecture from where you are today, which is the baseline architecture. A gap represents the difference between the baseline and target. 
to better represent the work required to fill in the gap, identify the projects, which are the grouped activities that must be performed to achieve the target architecture, and associate them with the gap. But projects can be very big. What you have to do is to decompose work into smaller, more manageable components until satisfied that the work is defined at a sufficient level of detail to estimate time, cost, and resource. The components decomposed are known as work packages. For each work package, the following has to be specified. Description. Describe what will be performed under this work package and the expected outcome. You may also explain the reason of initiating the work package, the prerequisites and relationship to opportunity, architecture definitions, and architecture requirements, business value. Describe the value the work package will deliver upon its successful completion. Here are some kinds of business values you can think about. Economic value or profit, employee value, customer value, supplier value, partner value, managerial value, marketing value, etc. Objectives and approach. State the targets to achieve in concrete manner. For example, setup of backup server. Describe the direction or the way chosen to reach the target. For example, change the existing obsolete data server to a backup server. Functional requirements. Specific functionality that define what the work package is supposed to accomplish. Dependencies. The completion of a work package may rely on the prior completion or partial completion of other work packages. States the dependencies between the work packages in a way that allows audiences to understand the priority and sequencing of implementation efforts. Outcome and deliverables. Both tangible and non-tangible outcome upon the success completion of work package. If there are little changes between the baseline and target architecture, the changes can probably be implemented within a short period of time, which is nice. But if this is not the case, you might want to add multiple milestones in between the baseline and target. Each milestone is known as a transition architecture, which describes the enterprise as an architectural significant state between the baseline and the target architecture. You start from the baseline, make some changes in the transition architecture, make more changes in the next transition architecture, until all changes are implemented. There are several patterns in representing the possible intermediate situations that may happen in between the baseline and target. The first pattern is straightforward. You start from the baseline architecture, and then reaching the transition architecture, finally the target architecture. This is another pattern, which involves the use of an end junction. If there are sufficient resources to carry out the changes required to meet multiple transitions in parallel, Use the end junction to connect them. Besides the end junction, there is also an OR junction. Obviously, the OR junction means either one. Either aim to reach this transition architecture first or another one. The transition architecture here is a combination of the two previous transition architectures. It means that no matter which transition architecture to reach first, the next phase of activity will be to get the remaining parts complete. Activity 2. Develop Implementation and Migration Plan This activity focuses on the scheduling and sequencing of work. It involves determining the dependencies among work packages and creating schedule for implementation activities. In order to represent the dependencies among work packages, form a pair chart with the work packages and establish connectivity between tasks. tasks are the alternative form of work packages. A pair chart stands for Program Evaluation Review Technique, which helps you to create diagram workflows, milestones, schedules, timetables, critical paths, and other planning requirements for a project. The connections between tasks represent their dependencies. For each task in a pair chart, specify the task name, which is the name of the work package by default an ID that identifies the task uniquely. The planned start and finish date of the task. Note that a task can only be started if the depending task is complete. 
In other words, the start date of a task must be greater than the finish date of all the dependent tasks. The duration, which is the number of days between the start and end date, and the person who are responsible for this task. Besides the per chart, you also have to create a migration roadmap which describes the timeline of the progression from the baseline architecture to the target architecture. The projects and the work packages are listed in the roadmap. On top of the roadmap, there is a timeline. The bottom part of the roadmap shows the transition architectures, if any, with the planned available dates indicated by the vertical line. The durations of work packages are shown as bars. Major track points are indicated as triangles below the timeline. You can optionally indicate the points of investment as well. Result of Phase E The goal of Phase E is to produce a detailed architecture roadmap and migration plan, which involves the identification of work packages, transition architectures, and the creation of migration plan. In this phase, the following deliverables will be produced. Architecture roadmap, implementation and migration plan, and the updating of the architecture requirements specification. So we can now move on to phase F. In phase F, we'll confirm how the transition architecture that implements the architecture will be governed. Thanks for watching this video. See you in phase F.